Die Verbum, Part 2 Chapter 6 Sacred Scripture in the Life of the Church The Church has always venerated the Divine Scriptures just as she venerates the body of the Lord, since, especially in the Sacred Liturgy, she unceasingly receives and offers to the faithful the bread of life from the table both of God's Word and of Christ's body. She has always maintained them, and continues to do so, together with sacred tradition, as the supreme rule of faith, since, as inspired by God and committed once and for all to writing, they impart the word of God himself without change, and make the voice of the Holy Spirit resound in the words of the prophets and apostles. Therefore, like the Christian religion itself, all preaching of the church must be nourished and regulated by sacred scripture. For in sacred books, the Father who is in heaven meets his children with great love and speaks for them. And force and power in the word of God is so great that it stands as the support and energy of the church, the strength of faith for her sons, the food of the soul, the pure and everlasting source of spiritual life. Consequently, these words are perfectly applicable to sacred scripture. For the word of God is living and active. Hebrews chapter 4 verse 12 And it has the power to build you up and give you your heritage among those who are sanctified. Acts chapter 20 verse 32 First Thessalonians chapter 2 verse 13 Easy access to sacred scripture should be provided for all the Christian faithful. That is why the Church from the very beginning accepted as her own that very ancient Greek translation of the Old Testament, which is called the Septuagint. And she has always given a place of honor to other Eastern translations and Latin ones, especially in the Latin transla translation known as the Vulgate. But since the word of God should be accessible at all times, the church, by her authority and with maternal concern, sees to it that suitable and correct translations are made into different languages, especially the original texts of the sacred books. And should the opportunity arise, and the church authorities approve, if these translations are produced in cooperation with the separated brethren as well, all Christians will be able to use them. The bride of the incarnate word, the church taught by the Holy Spirit, is concerned to move ahead towards a deeper understanding of the sacred scriptures, so that she may increasingly feed her sons with the divine words. Therefore, she also encourages the study of the Holy Fathers of both East and West, and of sacred liturgies. Catholic exegetes then, and other students of sacred theology, working diligently together and using appropriate means, should devote their energies, under the watchful eye of the sacred teaching office of the Church, to an exploration and exposition of the divine writings. This should be so done that many ministers of the divine word as possible will be able effectively to provide the nourishment of the scriptures for the people of God, to enlighten their minds, strengthen their wills, and set men's hearts on fire with the love of God. The sacred synod encourages the sons of the church and biblical scholars to continue energetically, following the mind of the church, with the work they have so well begun, with a constant renewal of vigor. Sacred theology rests on the written word of God, together with sacred tradition, as its primary and perpetual foundation. By scrutinizing in the faith of life all truth stored up in the mystery of Christ, theology is most powerfully strengthened and constantly rejuvenated by that word. For the sacred scriptures contain the word of God, since they are inspired, really are the word of God, so that the study of the sacred page is, as it were, the soul of sacred theology. 
By the same word of Scripture, the ministry of the word also, that is, pastoral preaching, catechesis, catechetics, and all Christian instruction, in which the literal homily must be west hold the foremost place, is nourished in a healthy way and flourishes in a holy way. Therefore, all the clergy must hold fast to the sacred scriptures through diligent sacred reading and careful study, especially the priests of Christ and others, such as deacons and catechists who are legitimately active in the ministry of the word. This is to be done so that none of them will become an empty preacher of the word of God outwardly, who is not a listen, listener to it inwardly. Since they must share the abundant wealth of the divine word with the faithful committed to them, especially in the sacred liturgy, the sacred synod also earnestly and especially urges all the Christian faithful, especially religious, to learn by frequent readings of the divine scriptures the excellent knowledge of Jesus Christ. Philippians chapter 3 verse 8 For ignorance of the scriptures is ignorant of Christ, Therefore, they should gladly put themselves in touch with the sacred text itself, whether it be through the liturgy, rich in divine word, or through devotional reading, or through instruction suitable for the purpose and other, other aids which, in our time, with approval and active support of the shepherds of the church, are commendably spread everywhere. And let them remember that prayer should accompany the reading of sacred scripture, so that God and man may walk together. For we speak to him as when we pray, we hear him when we read the divine saying. It devolves on sacred bishops, who have the ap apostolic teaching, to give the faithful entrusted to them suitable instruction, in the right use of the divine books, especially the New Testament and above all the Gospels. This can be done through the translation of the sacred texts, which are to be provided with the necessary and really adequate explanations so that the children of the Church may safely and profitably become conversant with the sacred scriptures and penetrated with their spirit. Furthermore, Editions of sacred scriptures, provided with suitable foot footnotes, should be prepared also for the use of non-Christians and adapted to their situation. Both pastors of souls and Christians generally should see to the wise distribution of these in one way or another. In this way, therefore, through the reading and study of the sacred books, the word of God may spread rapidly and be glorified. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 1 And the treasure of revelation entrusted to the church may more and more fill the hearts of men. Just as the life of the church is strengthened through the more frequent celebration of Eucharistic ministry, similar we may hope for a new stimulus in the life of the Spirit from a growing reverence for the Word of God, which lasts forever. Isaiah chapter 40 verse 8, 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 23 to 25.